In this video, we are going to see an example of a realistic background job. The idea is the following. We have a web API that is using a third-party service. The problem is that that service is slow and it is also expensive. So every time we use it, we are incurring in some costs. So we want our web API to be faster and also we want that every time our users use our web API, we can retrieve the information that the third-party service provides us through cache so that we can save some money. So what we're going to do is that we're going to create a cache layer that will be filled from a background job repeatedly. So let's do that. All right, so we are here. We have a solution already created. So I will show you how the web API works. Let me come here, try it out, execute, and you're going to see that it takes a few seconds to respond to us. That is because we're using our third party service. And as you can see, it is just a simple JSON response. But if we come back here and execute again, you are going to see that because we're using that slow service one more time, then our users have to wait a lot of time, which is not good, which is not a good user experience. So we're going to fix that by using a cache layer that will be created by us. So let's come here. Let's come to Visual Studio. I want to show you the code. As you can see here, I'm using the HTTP client and I'm also configuring this product service here. Let's come to the product service, which is the class that uses the HTTP client and then interact with that service with that third party service that we have here. Of course, the service itself is not a slow because what we're doing is that we're simulating a slow service, but this is enough for our example. So as you can see here, this service returns an enumerable of product. And as you can see, the shape of a product is the following ID and name. And we also have a interface here an interface here and also we have a controller which we can see from here product controller as you can see it is a simple controller which is using the iProduct service to get a list of products so this is great this is a very simple web api so what we're going to do is that we're going to use a cache layer created by us we're not going to use something like output cache because what i want is to always use that cache layer and not use it until the cache expires so we're going to do the following we're going to create a new service which is going to be a simple very simple implementation of a cache layer we're going to see we're going to say products cache let's come here and we're going to do the following i'm going to say private i'll create a field in which we are going to store the products that a third-party service returns to us so let me say here i enumerable of product this can be null so products semicolon then public i enumerable of products now this will be like a get method for getting the products so i enumerable get products and i will just return products and now we're going to do a set method so public void a store we're going to store a new i enumerable of products so i enumerable of product products now there is something that we must take into account that is that we are in a multi-threaded environment which means that since we're going to have several http requests made to us at the same time probably maybe thousands or even millions of http requests we must make our code thread safe and therefore what we're going to do is that instead of simply saying something like let me say here new products by the way instead of saying something like new products like products equal to new products this is a problem because we could provoke a race condition in which we don't know what exactly could happen to our code so instead of having this unsafe code here we're going to use interlock interlock allows us to create atomic operations so that even in a multi-threaded environment this code will run in a predictable manner so let me say here exchange so that i can exchange the reference of products to new products so basically what i'm doing here is that i am assigning to products these new products that i have passed here as a parameter of this method but but it does it in a thread safe manner now we're almost done here i just want to extract an interface from here i can put it in the same file just to save some time so as you can see here we have this interface now let me create a background job so in services i'll add a new class i'll call it products back ground job all right so i will inherit from as we saw in a previous video i will use background service and i will implement this abstract class but there is a catch since we always want our users to communicate with the cache layer right we must make sure that every time we fire up our web api that cache layer is filled with products right therefore I must override the start async method of the background service abstract class 
so that every time we fire up our application, we're going to run the method that is going to fill the cache with information. And after we do that, is that we're going to start allowing HTTP requests into our web API. So let's do that. Let's come here. And let me say override, I want to override the start async, so this one, and I will leave this at the bottom, but I will say here async because I want to use asynchronous programming. I have to say here await, and now I want to create a method that is going to use our product service and it's going to fill our cache with products. So remember something, this product's background job is always going to be executing, so it's basically a singleton. But if we come back to the program class, we are going to see that the iProduct service is defined as a scope, which means that we have to use the iService provider to create a, a scope so that we can get an instance of our iProduct service. So let's do that. Let's come here and I can use dependency injection in a background job. As you can see here, I will say iService provider, iService provider, service provider, control dot, create and assign as a field. Now in here, I also want to inject the iProducts cache, my iProducts cache service. So products cache here, control dot to assign as a field. Why I can simply inject the iProducts cache here and not the iProducts service? Because remember that iProducts cache is going to be a singleton because I want to share that cache layer with every user. Meanwhile, iProducts service is a, a scope service and therefore it cannot be injected here. So let's come down here. I will create a method that is going to take the products from the third party service and it's going to store those products in cache. So let's do that. Private async task update products cache. And then I will create a scope here so that I can get a hold of the product service instance of a product service instance. So using bar scope equal to service provider dot create a scope. All right. Now I want to get a hold of an instance of the product service. So products service, and I will use a scope dot service provider dot get required service. And I will say here, I products, I product service. All right. So after that, I will get the list of products. So products equal to await product service dot get to get the products. And then after that, I will use my products cache to store those products. All right, excellent. Something else that I want to do here is to say here, console right line, just so we have something on the console to see, updating the cache of products. All right, so now I want to use this method here. So I will say await this. And now in here in execute async, as we saw in a previous video, we can repeatedly execute a task. For that, we're going to say while stopping talking, stopping talking dot is cancellation requested. I'll say await task delay because I want to execute this task every, for example, every five minutes, every hour, once a day, etc. In my case, just to keep this example simple, we're going to do it every 10 seconds. But in real life, you may want more time, of course. So time span, time span dot from seconds, I'll say 10 seconds, and I will pass the stopping token so that if the user wants to leave the application, they can just do it. And we're going to stop this background job. So let me say here async so that we can use the await operator. And then after that, we're going to say await update product cache. So we're going to update the cache every 10 seconds in our case. All right, we're almost done. Now we have to come to the products controller and I will change this to iProducts cache. So iProducts cache and the same goes here, iProducts cache. And then in here, I think this is called get products. So get products. Let me remove this parenthesis. Now remember that get products is not an asynchronous method. Therefore, we cannot use await here. And now we don't need this async here. And we also don't need this task here, so let me eliminate this. All right, and let me say that this will not be null. And finally, the final thing that we must do is to come back to the program class because we must configure our new services. So builder services, remember that we're going to use a singleton for the products cache. So iProducts cache, iProducts cache, products 
cache, all right, and also builder services. Remember that in order to configure a background job, we use at hosted service. So at hosted service, products, background job. But we are not done because we have an error. Our application doesn't compile. So let me come here. Let's see that we're missing a semicolon here. All right, so now let's press Control F5 and let me see that I can show you the console and you can see that it says updated the cache products, but it is not still receiving requests because it first must fill the cache before accepting HTTP requests. So as you can see, this has finished. As you can see, we can see the URL here. So let me put this here because you are going to see something. You can see that the cache is already being filled again because that is every 10 seconds. But I want to show you something that is very cool. I want to show you that even though in the background the cache is being updated, you can see that I can continually um, use my application and it is never slow. It does never get slow because we are always using cache. It doesn't matter that just now the cache was updated and therefore we were using our third party service. Our application always, always, always responds immediately to our user's request and therefore now our web API is faster. If you want to learn more about web APIs, buy my Udemy courses today. I have a course on minimal APIs with Entity Framework Core. Also, I have a course on minimal APIs with Dapper using extra procedures. And that thing that you saw me doing with the interlock class, if you don't know what's that about, you can buy my concurrency in C-Sharp course, in which we learn about asynchronous programming and also parallelism in C-Sharp. Link with a discount to all of my courses in the description of this video. Thank you.